In March 2021, with my own money, I purchased a Lamborghini Orange BMC Team Machine SLR013 with a SRAM Force group set that literally had a mind of its own. See that when I did that? Hmm? That one? There you go. I mean, that group set was so technologically advanced, it was changing gears without me doing anything. But that bike, that orange BMC, represented, I guess, a sliding doors moment in my little cycling world. As it was the first complete disc brake bike that I purchased with my own money, commencing the beginning of a new era. I mean, in this room alone, I have a Superior, a modern BMZ team machine a Chapter 2 Coco. And at home, I have a wind space and I have another BMC team machine and any minute now, a Polygon Stratos will be arriving at my front door. Now, yes, that is a ridiculous volume of bikes and perhaps I need a bit of time out from this addiction. But more importantly, all those bikes are disc brake bikes. I mean, I have literally forgotten what it's like to ride a rim brake bike and that it's very sad. But that is not the ultimate reason why I have decided to step back in time. You see, there's been a lot of chat online, particularly on YouTube in my little bubble for a number of years, suggesting that the older bikes are better. They're definitely easier to work on, but a lot of people say their performance is better. They're stiffer, they're lighter, they're even faster. In fact, I am 100% sure that Durian Rider has got into my head. Another cycling YouTuber whose videos all of a sudden started popping into my feed at the back end of last year. Where? Durian buys a specialized S-Works SL8 and commences a sequence of videos basically telling us all how crap the new disc brake bikes are. And if you want a real bike, get on the old rim brake train. And this argument, viewpoint, whatever you want to call it, it does scratch an itch for me. I mean, I do miss riding my old BMC team machine SLR01 that I purchased in 2013. And I do often wonder how much better, if at all, are the new integrated disc brake bikes over the old bikes. Now, I have done some digging around the internet and I found some weird things, but I also want you to keep in mind that the internet is a very big place. So I could be wrong here, but I don't, know if anyone has ever taken the latest and greatest for the purpose of this video we're calling modern race bike which is this 2023 bmc team machine slr01 with durace di2 and some dt swiss 50 millimeter carbon hoop and comprehensively compared it to its old school rim brake counterpart being this 2013 bmc team machine slr01 with shimano durace 9000 which originally came with some eastern alloy wheels and an eastern alloy cockpit via a number of repeated and different speed tests on low wind days uphill downhill on the flats using the same power source. In this case being today's video sponsor, Asioma Power Pedals. That's right, to all the haters out there, BMC are not sponsoring this video. In fact, they wanted nothing to do with it. I tried, but my contact there was like, why would we want to promote an obsolete product, you dickhead? Promote that man! He didn't say you dickhead, but that was kind of the tone I was getting and I kind of understand where he's coming from, to be honest. So this is what you call a personal interest project. And to validate that, you know, some of you are with me on this, you're interested, please feel free to bathe this video in likes. It helps the video and the channel out. That would be greatly appreciated. Now, I know what some of you might be saying. It's not possible to compare these two bikes. They're fundamentally different. One's new school, disc brakes, aero integrated cockpit systems. The other one is not set up for this. So we've tried, and when I say we've, I'm talking about myself and the brains behind this operation, Aaron, the pro mechanic. Here's how we've attempted to close this gap, old school versus modern. But first things first, as this bike is at least 10 years old, I needed to take her into Aaron for assessment and then give her the royal treatment. It was in good condition for its age, but it was in not good enough condition for what you want to do. Yeah. So what we've done is we've gutted the bicycle, well, I've gutted the bicycle, <laughs> um, completely pulled it apart. Uh, we have removed everything that was bad, corroded, or not up to spec. So straight away headset assembly, we're talking about that. It was seized in, it's probably been in there for 10 years. 
Uh, there was no grease in there, in there at all. So we've replaced the whole headset assembly, new bearings. We've done bottom bracket assembly because the bottom bracket had collapsed. We have put on new or sourced those new Durace chain rings, which were pretty tricky to get, but we've got hold of those for you. Um, new chain, new Durace cassette. So the bike originally came with that nine speed cassette, yeah. um, so which wouldn't work. So we've got uh, all new cable kits, new brake pads, Everything, everything's been ultrasonic cleaned. So for Aaron to refurbish the old BMC with new cables, bottom bracket, headset bearings, and he was the one to provide the borderline new Durace 11 speed cassette, that was 750 Aussie dollars. I then sourced the 5236 Durace chain rings, which needed to be replaced, and that was an additional $297. So, so far, I've had to spend 1,000 and roughly $50 on top of the purchase price of this second hand bike, which I'll get to in a second, but first, back to Aaron. And then to modernize it so we can have a good comparison, uh, we've got obviously a new uh, one piece cockpit on the front end here, and we've got the new creative wheel set on there as well. So it should good give a, um, a pretty good comparison to a new style of bicycle. Anything to be concerned about? Mm, concerned? Yeah, like you're, you're, you're gonna fall back in love with it. Okay. <laughs> So technically, if I was just riding this bike around and not worried about you know, doing speed tests for YouTube, I wouldn't need to worry about upgrading the wheels and the bars on the old school BMC. But to create a fairer comparison for the speed test, I had a set of integrated Seeker bars lying around, same 420 millimeter width as the modern BMC setup, valued at 600 AUD, and a set of creative classic 45 millimeter depth carbon wheels valued at 1800 AUD. Lastly, add in two Vittoria Corsa Pro 26 millimeter tires and a couple of lightweight thermoplastic tubes, add in circa 200 AUD. So basically, I've spent 3650 AUD on a secondhand BMC that cost me 1600 Australian dollars. So, the total here is 5000 $250, or that's circa 3,500 USD. Now, three critical pieces of information I wanna share with you before we start comparing these bikes now by weighing old versus new. Number one, I won't be weighing the bikes with pedals, but the pedals I'll be using for the power base speed test will, of course, be the Asioma Duo dual-sided power pedal, today's video sponsor, which weigh a touch over 300 grams for the pair. And interestingly, I reckon this is the only cycling product over the last 10 years that has actually come down in cost. I bought my first Quark power meter in 2012 on an old Specialized Venge, and that cost me 1,600 Australian dollars. Today, 2024, you can get these for around $1,000. They are way more reliable, way more convenient, and I can tell you right now from having to use the Asioma support just recently, their customer service is second to none. So if you're keen to get some power meter pedals, I'll link to the Asiomas below. And thank you to Asioma for supporting the channel. Number two, for this weigh-in, I will be weighing the modern BMC with the stock DT Swiss 50 millimeter wheels. But for the speed test comparisons I will be doing very soon, Michael from Creative Carbon Wheels has very kindly offered to loan me the disc brake wheel set equivalent that's on the old school BMC. So the same 45 millimeter wheel depth, carbon rim layup, Sapham CX Ray aero bladed spokes and the Creative Ratchet Hub paired with the Vittoria Corsa Pro 26 mm clincher tires and the TPU tubes. Meaning the wheels and tires will be borderline identical for the speed test, but for the weigh-in today, slightly different. And number three, just be aware that the old Team Machine geometry, like pre-2014, was a little bit different. On the modern BMC Team Machine, I am a 54, and on an old school BMC Team Machine, I am a 50. So the old school frame is slightly smaller but not as small as you would think given the 50 label. In fact, the reach is only eight millimeters difference. Probably the main difference is a stack height which is 20 millimeters lower on the old school BMC. But as you can see, Aaron has left more of a chimney on the old school BMC to ensure the same overall stack height. And I've added a 10 millimeter longer stem so the reach is the same. So my body position for the speed test is gonna be basically the same, although the frame is a touch smaller for this weigh-in today. Let's weigh these bad boys. So 6.83 
modern BMC. 6.48 old school BMC. So the old school BMC team machine is currently winning the battle by a fair chunk of weight. Part two of this video, I will be waiting for a super low wind day, so they don't come about all that often. You'll need to be patient with me here and performing the speed test. So stay tuned for that video and I'll leave you with, I've had a few questions, where can I get an old mate t-shirt? Now that's a bloody good t-shirt, but not on you, you idiot. We've all got a little bit of old mate in us. I'll put a link to that below if you wanna check them out and I'll catch you in the next video.